Adventures. Hey guys, it's Chuk here from Chuk's Outdoor Adventures. Well, this summer has just been crazy with all the bear attacks. I don't know what's going on. All these brown bear and grizzly bear attacks. But shout out to a lot of my viewers. I've been getting a lot of emails and direct messages telling me about all these accounts. So I appreciate it. I got at least six messages telling me about this amazing story of survival and heroism from Idaho. Now, a lot of the bear attack stories when I was working with Dean Wingarden, you know, he's compiling this database of bear attacks that were thwarted by pistols in all over the world. But uh, we got a lot from Alaska, but the majority come from Montana and Wyoming. But Idaho is a beautiful state. They have the mountains there in the north, a lot of hunting. This uh, account happened, I believe, the 1st of September in Idaho. Now, this is the story of Riley Hill and his friend, Braxton Myers. Um, and there's a, they had another friend with them, three young bow hunters. Thankfully, they had pistols on them. But the story is amazing. Check out the East Idaho news station. Uh, I watched a 31-minute video interview. And then uh, there's text below that actually talked about the firearms, which I was really thankful it told the model. Now they said that they had bear bullets. So I had assumed that it was hopefully hard cast or at least a bonded bullet or a solid copper bullet, but what an amazing story. Now I've always said that these bears in the lower 48 are sometimes meaner than the Alaska bears here, except for the Russian River bear that bit the guy's face off. But down there, it's always hot. I mean, the bears have it easy up here. It's nice, cool weather, but you know, it's 100 degrees down in Idaho and Montana, Wyoming, some of these inland areas. And the stories that I read are they're just terrifying. These bears rip people's scalps off and just, oh, it's they, they are really angry bears. And I've always said, it's like, look at the news in Los Angeles in the summertime when it's in the 90s and these people have road rage or are killing each other on the highway. It's always because they're just cramped in this little car at rush hour and they're getting really hot and uncomfortable and then they get really mad and just go berserk. That's what I think these bears are doing. It's in this, this heat just drives them crazy. But anyways, these uh, three young bow hunters were out hunting elk. It sounds like it was just beautiful territory. And I hadn't seen this before. I knew in Alaska, the, the brown bears and grizzly bears will bed down in kind of these grassy areas that are kind of flat. But he was talking about how the bears kind of dig a little hole and then put pull brush around them to kind of get down in. So they were going through some kind of thick area and just, just out of nowhere, this bear was on them. Now, this is an amazing story. Uh, the bear was super close. And so one guy had his Springfield 10 millimeter. Now it doesn't say if it was a TRL, you know, the TRL operator 1911. I don't think so. I think it was an XDM. He had a Springfield 10 millimeter. Uh, his buddy had a Taurus 1911 45 ACP. Now you may scoff at that, but according to Ammo Land study with Dean Wayne Garden, there's actually a number of bears that have been dispatched with 45 ACP. It's a decent round. And I've talked about at least two examples here in Alaska where uh, brown bear, large brown bear was taken down by a 45 ACP. A lot of people don't believe it, but it, it actually has done really well. So they shot 45 times, or no, they shot 24 times to take down this bear at basically point blank range. Now, uh, the main guy, he pulled out his XDM, you know, he got like three or four shots right on the bear. He First, he shot the bear in the side, but it takes a lot to take these brown bears down, especially when they're angry. And they called this a fighting bear. It was 20 years old. Up here, when you have a 20-year-old brown bear, it's usually really mean and angry. Its teeth are worn down. It's in pain from its teeth and its joints. And it, it's not a bear you want to run into because they're looking for an easy meal. They see a human. They just may be in a bad mood. They'll try to take you down. They called it a fighting bear because it was missing one ear, so they don't think they could, it could have heard them on that side. But anyways, it jumped on this young guy and it grabbed its arm and just started 
flinging them around. He described it as, you know, pulling on a toy, playing tug of war with your dog, only it was his arm. So he was fighting for his life, getting flailed around. Uh, the other guys trying to get a shot off. The, the story is amazing. You just got to hear it. But um, so he got, you know, several shots off with the 10 millimeter and then his buddies trying to get a good shot with his 45 but the bear's moving around it's on top of his buddy but thankfully they he finally gets around and and you know get some point blank shots they're able to dispatch the bear uh, with these these pistols and it took 24 shots and they said bear bullets so again i'm thinking hard cast or something like that now what is amazing about this story is already this guy you know he's had surgery still recovering it's going to be several months of recovering but people are telling him oh you should have used bear spray and he says mid-interview and then at the end oh yeah everybody keeps saying you should have used bear spray but that would not have worked at this close range with an enraged charging bear that was already on top of me. I agree 100%. Look, I am a fan of bear spray. I recently went out with Nick Johnson. We did a little hike. I had some bear spray and a firearm on me. Um, I think bear spray is great. It worked for my uncle once. There was a bear like 20 yards away, slowly walking up a trail, not charging him. He pulls out his bear spray. I don't want to flag myself. Last time I, people are saying I'm flagged myself with the bear spray. He pulls out his bear spray. He lets out a big cloud. And this black bear sniffed it, didn't like it, and just took off running. So that was much different than a charge when, the, you know, you've got a bear that's a few feet from you that's just jumping on you, ripping your arm apart. I mean, he said in the interview that the bear spray would have done nothing. People in Kodiak will tell you that. People in Kodiak carry shotguns and big bore revolvers and 10 millimeters and things like that. And uh, they'll laugh at you if you just go off on a hunting trip or something, bow hunting, and all you've got is bear spray because people there know that it will not work. They say, it, you know, the bears will season you with that stuff and eat you because up here it has happened. People have been partially eaten by bears for food, like they're preying on people. You know, they'd like to say it doesn't happen that often. I think it would happen more often if people weren't so careful. Thankfully, people are careful. But amazing story. They took this bear down, and then at the end, he said again, and even his buddy said, look, I, I will still carry bear spray, but we would not have survived if it wouldn't have been for the firearms. So I'm very thankful that they had firearms. They were able to fight for their lives and take that bear out. Just a crazy story. So, of course, the 10 millimeter. I like the Springfield XDM uh leaning towards it with the trigger. I will say that the, the Taurus jammed. Now, they also talked about the importance of carrying another magazine. Thankfully, his buddy had the you know sense to quickly rack it and put a new magazine in it when it failed and he was back in business in the fight. So, but these Springfields, are, they're just, they don't jam. I've never had one jam on me. These things are tough. They have been torture tested before they were even put out. Great great firearm. This is my uh, Toklat. A lot of people in Alaska, thanks to me, get these. And even before I was doing videos on them, it was popular up here. This is a 454 Kasul, five inch barrel, Ruger's tough, Ruger Red Hawk line, Super Red Hawk, just an amazing, amazing revolver, more power than the 10 millimeter. I like to kind of compromise and carry a 460 Roland. Now this is a FNX with 460 Roland's build. They put the barrel and the comp on there and a spring in it. So I've got almost 44 Magnum power in a semi-auto platform with some, some big hard cast that I carry in this thing. So uh, uh, this I feel is even better because you're, you're basically got a revolver power of 44 Magnum in a semi-auto platform. But as always, the king is 12 gauge. And, and, I, and I know some people have talked about Berettas and stuff, and then those are great, but I think the best you can get is a Benelli M4 with slugs. Uh, Fish and Game up here suggests the Brennecke Black Magic slugs. That's what I usually carry. But something like this in a semi-auto 12 gauge just spitting slugs. I mean, we had that guy in Kodiak take out 
a uh, thousand pound brown bear with one shot to the jaw up through its skull with a 12 gauge. And I think he had something like this. So after all this, I'm going through my feed. I really need to get on X because I, I, I've never done much on it. I'm on it, but I, I'm just not familiar with the, the platform. And I need to get on it because it's so horrible. We've got this AI tracking and this malware and the spy bots. And you say something and then it starts, you know, recommending stuff to you on your feed and Facebook or whatever, Instagram. And so I've been talking, doing all these videos, talking about 10 millimeter and bear spray and bears. And you look at like Outdoors Magazine, they'll talk about, oh, this bear attack happened. And then underneath it, it'll highlight how to protect yourself from bears. And they'll have a whole article on how bear spray is the best thing to do. And, and it's not, bear spray is good, don't get me wrong, but you really need a firearm if you wanna survive a charge, a close up attack like that. And so all over my feed, I'm getting this ad for Scat Built. And what a horrible name that company chose for their uh it's a belt that holds your bear spray well, you know it's in a way it's kind of cool it holds it vertically like like some of the knives i like but it's the scat belt and 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 i don't know why they call it that because bears leave scat and they're gonna eat you and like have pepper tasting scat like all over the trail but anyways uh all over my feed is, is the scat belt and just ad after ad of the scat belt. And then I started looking at the comments and you had like normal, like whatever hunters like me saying, well, yeah, that's great, but you really need a firearm. And then holy cow, the woke Karen militia. I couldn't believe the comments I was reading. It was like, oh, that's just stupid. You're gonna accidentally shoot somebody. Use the scat belt and bear spray only. And, and these, insane people believe that even though we've got interviews where, where these courageous bow hunters are saying, yeah, bear spray is cool, but when you're getting charged up close like that, you, you need a firearm, no doubt. I, I'm never going out again without both. And uh, <laughs> these people on the scat belt conversations are just like, yeah, you gun people are insane. And, and it's this, uh, the, this thing that the media is trying to push uh, and, and I believe now that they just don't want anybody to have firearms at all. They hate firearms. They don't want us to be, you know, an armed population of citizens. They just say, oh, all you need is bear spray. And the, uh, you know, left-sided media is pushing this very hard. And I'm getting pretty sick of it. That's why I keep doing these videos talking about, no, these bears are taken out with uh, even handguns. And if you look at Ammo Land's study with Dean Weingarten, they talk about how the, the percentage of survival with handguns is actually very high. And people have been very successful defending themselves with handguns. And just now, September 1st, 2024, these guys did it again, saved their own lives with handguns and uh, the scat belt would not have worked. So let me know what you guys think. Please like, share, and subscribe. Become a patron if you can. I have links down below, and I'm going to keep these stories up. I'll have a new video up tomorrow morning. Thanks, guys. It's Chook, your friend in the field. My name is Chook. I like to trade my guns just for fun, but now I have none. Oh, look, it shot my bear, but I don't care. I got a 10 millimeter. Chook's out of adventure. Why don't you almost die? Every time